Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York System, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. Let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales, a Nassau Community College Foundation production on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Aurora Workman. I am president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Dr. Linda Nadian, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College, and together we'll share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, Aurora and I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College interested in sharing their experience here at Nassau Community College, along with the secrets to their success. Now, this week, we're, you know, all of us in this room have uh, Uniondale in common. Yeah. And, you know, the Uniondale Union Free School District is committed to a role in helping to build and refine the technological, social, and economic and the academic skills individuals need to function in the complex and multifaceted global society of the future. And I am a Uniondale graduate, so I know that's true. Um, it helps open up our world. And so we're looking forward to the this broadcast and speaking to all of us who were Uniondale bound. Mm -hmm. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our web pages at www.nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash alumni. If you, our listening audience, has any positive news you would like to share about Nassau Community College alumni, engagements, births, graduations, weddings, and or accolades, email us at alumni at nassaucommunitycollege.edu and we will shout you out. Today's guest is Dr. Franz Dorsonville, Assistant Principal in the Uniondale School District, an adjunct professor at the New York University Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development, and of course, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College. Welcome to Lion Tales, Dr. Franz Dorsonville, Class of 1993. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much uh, for having me uh, on the show. Aurora and uh, Dr. Nadian, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I feel, uh, you know, um, really taken back because I haven't been on, on this campus for a while now. And it's mm -hmm. funny, you know, I'm so close, but you don't right. actually come to um, it come on campus. It has changed a lot. Yeah. It has changed a lot. And specifically, I have spent a lot of time in this building, mm -hmm. Building H, uh, taking, uh, you know, I took African-American studies. Yeah, yeah, that's the building. Instead of... Um, European history. <laughs> yeah, spent a lot of time here. Yes, yeah, so yep. we have Dr. Um, Ken Jenkins mm -hmm. here and a, a very grand advocate and mentor of many of the students that come back to campus and to talk about their love of the campus. So you have left Nassau Community College and you have gone on to do some great things, young man. For 20 years, you have risen through the ranks in the Uniondale School District, from fifth grade teacher to school counselor and now to assistant principal. Now, how is that going for you? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going very well, and uh, it's going very well for me. And uh, when I started at Nassau, if someone had told me that I have reason to all the things that you mentioned mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, I, pr I, I probably couldn't you know uh, I couldn't see it mm -hmm. but I did know that um, if I work hard enough that uh, you know the you know the sky was uh, the limit for me. Listen, what here at NASA gave you that shift to sit there and say, you know, because I was one of those two that came here like, look, okay, my mom said just one semester, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> and if you do just one semester, yeah. then you know you decide after that. So you know, yeah. I took her up on that gamble. I thought I was gonna, mm -hmm. you know, and and really NASA had changed the trajectory of my life and right. going forward. Mm -hmm. So what here at NASA do you remember? Uh, for me, you know, as a as a you know as an immigrant uh, new to the country, as an ELL student, you know, um, Nassau was. 
pretty much the option for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there was no other option. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you're talking about uh, the inability to speak the language mm-hmm. well enough mm-hmm. uh, to uh, be accepted at a you know four year college, mm-hmm. and also uh, course affordability and access. Mm-hmm. You know, as an you know um, immigrant, I only been in the country about two years mm-hmm. uh, when I attended Nassau. I graduated Westbury High School uh, mm-hmm. for about two years and then graduated come here. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that was my only option. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, funny story. Mm-hmm. And I ended up spending about four years uh, at Nassau. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, you, can, you can laugh. You can laugh. <laughs> no, but most, you know, most I people think I was do. They, like, three years. <laughs> it's just so hard to part <laughs> you yeah. know, after the two years. Yeah. And I, one, one parent had called me and said, Lord, would you please tell my daughter it's not a university. <laughs> it's a two-year school and mm-hmm. she's been there now for six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, having done that, you know, I felt that I was not prepared enough when mm-hmm. I left high school. Uh, only having been here for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so being here an extra two years uh, really uh, gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, learn, not only learn English, mm-hmm. also uh, develop my communication skills, public speaking, now look at me now I can you know come on the radio and speak (laughs) and uh, you know do public speaking events you know so Nassau is a place where it's more than I think what people don't realize it's more than just a school where you just come to school and get a degree Mm -hmm. it really helps you develop and really find your voice and find who you are it was here that I you know discovered you know uh, that I was a people person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, uh, you know, I need to go towards uh, uh, have a career in, you know, where I can deal with people um, most of the time. Mm-hmm. And then over these 20 years, you've, there's been so many major shifts in education in the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about some of the good and the bad that you feel are relevant now. Well, you know, Dr. Nadian, have you <laughs> have you have you? Have you uh, know yourself or you have yes. witnessed as that, uh, you know, what we have seen? I mean, I think for me, I think we have seen, uh, you know, um, uh, better teachers, yes. teacher preparation mm-hmm. right. uh, coming out of college, you know, due to the rigor mm-hmm. that I think, uh, you know, colleges and universities have really embraced the idea of uh, better prepare the teachers Absolutely, uh, you know, yeah. coming out. So I think um, that's one uh, major shift. And uh, the increasing rigor in the curriculum to better prepare our students as right. well. Uh, even though Common Core rolled out was right. a disaster, yes, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, got but a lot the, of jokes behind Common Core. Yeah, right, but, yeah. the, but the idea behind it it really hold you know yes. all of us yes. right. accountable and increase the rigor to better prepare our students uh, for to be college and career ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think these are all positive things that I have seen over the year, uh, and then of course you know the birth of uh, you know uh, the opt out movement uh, right. that I see yeah. as a negative um, inside of um, of that movement because you know at the end of the day we, as we all know mm-hmm. we need to be certified in everything that we do and which right. requires yeah. us and, and to it's data driven you know which requires us to take uh, yeah. tests and yeah. exam mm-hmm. uh, to be certified you're listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC I'm Aurora Workman along with Dr. Linda Nadian and our guest today Today is Dr. Franz Dorsonville, assistant principal in the Uniondale School District, and among many other things, a TV host. So, we, as we were talking, we were we just talked about how the um, you know Common Core really made everyone critically think again. Mm-hmm. You know, it really took mm-hmm. us to task, and even though I hated it to my core, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it did allow. Even when I watched my kids who you know were struggling and like, ah, oh, why are you doing? It did allow them to kind of think out of that box, which is another thing that I see in the in in the. Um, Innovation and initiation uh, initiatives that new teachers are taking. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to have to go to the very line of a curriculum, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, come on, now. everyone needs to look and teach that curriculum that same way. So innovations have really allowed us to sit there and and meet the students where mm-hmm. we're at. You know, now what grade is your 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 assistant principal in? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an, I'm an assistant principal at an elementary school. Oh, okay. Uh, 
pre-K to... Uh, I always you know, say God bless the elementary school. Yeah. 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 We have a pre-K now, and oh. so that's been, that's been a, um, definitely a learning experience, trying to connect yes. pre-K all the way up until 12th grade, yes. so that there's some mm-hmm. vertical articulation, and what a little four-year-old can do, and what <laughs> a big 17-year-old can do, is right. very similar, yeah. Yeah. because th- there is a lot, there's so many demands on a four-year-old, and so many demands on, on a senior graduating, mm. so right. we can focus on that every exactly. day. Now, how many, you know, this is a great way, you know, to be in an elementary school, you can have so many scripts for a television show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and so for 15 years... A reality you, show. You know, reality. <laughs> no one would you believe know? what goes on. So, so for 15 years, you have produced a TV show titled The Tele-Education Show. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that program. Well, Tele-Education, you know, uh, it, it provides they provide me with a platform where I can um, share information mm-hmm. with the Haitian community mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, on that platform, you know, we talk about things that affect the community, mm-hmm. you know, uh, education, you know, parental involvement, you know, I encourage because, you know, culturally, it's culturally different, mm-hmm. uh, you know, coming from Haiti and here, Haiti, you know, culturally, you send your, you know, your children to school and mm-hmm. that's it, the school took care of it. So it's a different Model here, right. you know, parents have to be involved. So we talk about those those type of topics. I also talk about, you know, you know, as a former school counselor, mm-hmm. uh, I also talk about, you know, college application, financial aid, uh, scholarship. Why is it important to apply? Mm-hmm. Because people are not used to those type of information, mm-hmm. and then they don't believe that, you know, you can actually receive free money <laughs> to, you know, to attend school. So we provide those type of information, you know, um, and we have guests uh, uh, guests on the show talking about domestic violence we have you know different uh, professionals um who comes and share their experiences haitian professionals mm-hmm. who share their experiences mm-hmm. uh, similar wonderful. to what we're doing uh here yeah. mm-hmm. right and then cool. do people um you know follow up with uh some of the topics that you're talking about do they come back and say well this is what i learned from your show oh yes absolutely yeah uh, and you know we have a we have a phone number and people i mean would will call and you know ask questions and follow up Mm -hmm. and you know asking for referrals and you know Mm -hmm. most of the time I refer them to the resources that you know that are available yeah Mm -hmm. because we have a lot of outside agencies that can assist you Mm -hmm. know so many of the families and you know it's really up to us to try to guide them in that direction so that they're not alone and that there are ways to get things Mm -hmm. accomplished so that they they can have a more stable existence when they are here for the Absolutely. first time. Right. It mm-hmm. must be so scary to just say, "Now what do I do that I'm here?" Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sure people, and we know that because of the climate politically, people are very fearful mm-hmm. in in general. And yep. so, with with that other piece, mm-hmm. I think the schools have been very helpful in guiding people and yes. and assisting them to making them feel as comfortable as Absolutely, possible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting good at that. <laughs> yeah, and it's great that you know culturally. Uh, we do a lot of unconscious bias mm-hmm. um, talks here, and, and and it's really important for people to recognize that there are some culturally differences in terms of our education system or the processes by which we want uh, to educate our children. So it's great when we can pinpoint to someone such as yourself uh, a guide to talk to their communities mm-hmm. and to talk to you know whether it's uh, um, you know the, the single the single parents or those parents mm-hmm. who are now looking to the course of the future and to really understanding navigating the New York State education There's system. system. Yeah. Right. You know, is a and big understanding thing. That. Very, very yeah. intimidating. Yeah, yeah. even if you've been here forever, you, you don't know, understand. Yeah. It. I've been through it and I have worked in it and mm-hmm. still now and as a parent like, what? I get stuck now because my child is going to college it's like I'm not, I'm not the way minute. Yeah. what did I miss I think they so. expect educators to, to have this grand knowledge of what's going on but you Just really good. don't exactly in all of those application processes mm-hmm. alright you are listening to Lion Tales today's guest former alumnus of Nassau Community College and currently working as adjunct professor over at New York University as well as assistant principal in the Uniondale School District Dr. Franz Dorsonville my name is Linda Nadian along with Aurora Workman on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.
Okay, so maybe you didn't finish or broke your New Year's resolution to get to the gym or start that project you had kept on the back burner since, well, okay, the dawn of time. I get it. That's okay. But you know, there's one thing you can do to get back that inspiration, that can-do spirit. Perhaps you or someone you know has a vehicle that they don't drive anymore. Why not consider donating it to the National Federation of the Blind? All you have to do is call 866-282-7327. That's 866-282-7327. You can also log online to nfb.org and click donate. And maybe you know someone that's blind. You can reach out to nfb at nfb.org. Org. That's nfb at nfb.org. So what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain by helping someone in need, like your motivation. Oh, and a tax deduction. So why not get started today? And remember, charity is only a phone call away. Welcome back to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WH. PC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nady, along with Aurora Workman, and our guest today is Dr. Franz Dorsonville, former graduate of Nassau Community College, assistant principal over in the Uniondale School District, and adjunct professor at the New York University Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. So moving toward another area of your life, back in 2010, the country of Haiti suffered a major earthquake, and it was estimated that somewhere around 250,000 people lost their lives in that tragedy, and you felt compelled to act and help out, and can you share some of that uh, with us today? Um, yes. Um, after the earthquake, uh, you know, as, uh, as you know, the, uh, you know, the Uniondale School District really form a committee with local uh, district and local uh, leaders to really, uh, you know, uh, collect the nation, for, you know, for Haiti. Yeah. And it was a very uh, difficult moment for me, you know, I mean, being here and watching all the um, the news outlets, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and see all the devastation. Um, so we, di- we receive a tremendous amount of support from the community, I mean, locally. And uh, the children were really instrumental during that process as well in assisting in the collection fundraising and um and the packaging of all the thing that we uh, that we uh, received and uh shortly after i traveled to to haiti um a month later and the people were still in dire need uh, yeah you know um there and um and it was um it was really it was really a very difficult time i mean for me to see uh you know even though you we bought assistant mm-hmm. we, we still felt you know helpless right. because whatever we bought was not enough right and we were, i know we were concerned that anything that we did give mm-hmm. are they definitely getting it yes. and what mm-hmm. you know if it was brought into port you know how would that be distributed to mm-hmm. to the families mm-hmm. and and to make sure all the kids had everything that they needed back right so and I, that was I part of the reason why i went because you know transparency is yeah. you know is important yeah um you know especially dealing with uh you know dealing with haiti and some other mm-hmm. other countries you know in the world so that's why i went travel with an organization and we bought the donations uh, that we uh that we collected um you know to the people Mm -hmm. um so then when i returned from the trip you know um and i was like that that's not enough you know they you know they gotta be something else that i can do uh Mm -hmm. to uh continuously to provide support Mm -hmm. and um so uh, you know i i visited haiti back and uh we did a need assessment i spoke to a few friends and colleagues and Mm -hmm. about an idea about uh putting an organization together and then uh you know everyone come on board we went down there we did a need assessment and we and to focus on education and uh, the gift of writing foundation mm-hmm. was uh, was formed um, you know it's a non-for-profit and we collect school supplies we figured mm-hmm. since I'm in education I have a lot of right. colleagues in education well you know um, so uh, we we collect school supplies mm-hmm. every year since after the earthquake my oh, organization we've been traveling to Haiti delivering the donations um, you know to four schools that we have adapted um, so, so we have four schools that we adapted in Haiti. We support. And were the schools able to rebuild? Does it? Does it? Can you tell that they've used the, the materials that oh, yes, were sent yes, there? And yes, yes. So they some, have some schools. Some, some schools. Yeah. Some schools. And then yeah. so you traveled to Rwanda, yes. and Tanzania, mm-hmm. and then you are also a member of the CW Post uh, University Department of Mental Health Counseling Study Abroad Program. Yes. Um, you know, I I went on the uh, study abroad with uh, with 
with CW Post, mm -hmm. you know, to Rwanda and of, again doing um, uh, humanitarian work. Uh, you know, one of my professors, Dr. June Smith, okay. uh, you know, she's very, uh, very, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, very big as far as humanitarian work. Yeah. Uh, she does a lot of work in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So we had the opportunity to go there and visit the schools and visit orphanages. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, we bought them, um, you know, supplies mm -hmm. you know the the needs there's a greater need you know um you know everywhere for for the um for the basic basic oh, yes. supplies. The basic things mm -hmm. that basic we probably that we, take yeah, for granted take for right granted. Yeah. and so when you were a student here at nassau community college you were part of the haitian student association mm -hmm. so did that time prepare you in any way for all that you're doing now what were some oh, of the goals absolutely um, i was the president of the haitian club the year that i graduated oh, uh -huh. and, um, and it's 1993 yes 25 years ago yes. so um, it definitely had prepared me uh because i don't know if you if you guys uh, remember uh during that time was a rough time yeah. the uh, late 80s early 90s was a very rough time for Haitian population in general mm -hmm. uh, you know it was when um, you know the uh, accusation that you know we're the one who brought in the AIDS, AIDS epidemic, oh, right, yes. epidemic into the United States um, and um, and also at the time also there was a movie that also came out Serpent and the Rambo oh, uh, oh, yes, uh, yes, Serpent and that. the Rambo you know yes kind of like uh, the depicted this image of Haiti as every Haitian is a voodoo priest and, and you know, oh, there's nothing, right. yes. nothing positive coming out of Haiti. So I was part of that movement at the time trying to embellish our image, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, NCCs also provide the uh, platform for demonstrations, yes. for vo uh, right. uh, you know, to have a voice, to have a voice. Yes. So we did a lot of that um, on campus and, um, uh, you know, just educating the uh, school community mm -hmm. about, you know, Haiti and, um, and, and, you know, fighting, really fighting with a giant, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about Hollywood depicting this right. image. Yeah. Right. You know, um, so um, it was a very difficult time, wasn't that time? So that experience, I definitely not only you know uh, increase my awareness to continue to educate, not only educate the Haitian community, but to educate other communities about about, about Haiti and about the culture, about the people who we are, who we really so are. You are listening to Lion Tales on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. My name is Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Dr. Franz Dorsonville, class of nineteen ninety three, and currently working as an assistant principal in the Uniondale School District. So you, we found out that you were not only this assistant principal <laughs> and this human, great humanitarian, but you're the founder of the Gift of Writing Foundation, a nonprofit organization, and you were talking about earlier what the organization does. What does your organization need? Yeah. Well, what we need uh, throughout the year, what we do, we do fundraising, uh, you know, and we do collections. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we collect school supplies, you know, pen, pencils, and, uh, you know, the basic, the basic needs. Uh, we tend to shy away from receiving bundles of notebooks mm -hmm. because shipment is very expensive. Yeah. But, you know, anything that's easy to carry, like pen, pencil, mm -hmm. because when we, when we went down and that, which were tears to my eyes when I visited the schools and um, the idea of collecting pencil, the gift of writing, mm -hmm. was children were sharing with us that... Um, there are times they don't have a pencil to write to mm -hmm. the homework. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and you can see that they using the pencil to the uh, to the very nub. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, it's a very um, it's a very simplistic idea, but that really have a profound um, impact when we do go to Haiti. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Uh, we collect throughout the year, and then every spring break. Actually, mm -hmm. that's how we spend spring break. We go, we visit the mm -hmm. schools, and that's then we wonderful. we we uh, bring the donation with us again mm -hmm. to show transparency mm -hmm. for um, you know um, you know to to our donors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a um, we have a fundraising gala that we do every year. Mm -hmm. um, this year it, it will be at the Crest Hollow mm -hmm. uh, in March on March twenty ninth. Okay. Uh, and so now that when you go back to Haiti as now an accomplished educator and philanthropist and, and, you know, a person who people actually respond to, what is it like to go back there? Do you have family there? Yes, I, I still have family there. And, uh, you know, the people are grateful. The people are grateful. The people, you know, they... Um, 
they reach out to me for you know for resources yes. and uh, mm-hmm. you know and and you know uh, people who have the greatest impact on me when I go to Haiti are mm-hmm. the children yeah it's like, uh, it's their reaction That's to the receiving you know the you know uh, a pencil yeah just the pencil there, there is, is no such a big way thing to, there is no other way to say it you know the uh, the, the the smile and, and the love the thank yous and the hugs right. and yeah. uh, and we do a lot of things too like last year when we went we did an Easter hunt you know, okay. with the little oh, ones. Yeah. Um, we also now one of our little one of our schools, uh, which is a pre-K school, we uh, provide them with meal plan, oh, where we right. we send them uh, we send them donation monthly, mm-hmm. where they can feed the children at school. Because mm-hmm. the director of the school, uh, you know, said you know a lot of time the kids would come to school uh, hungry, hungry yeah. and then they come and they sleep all day. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the uh, you know part of our strategic planning, we provide uh, you know meal plan for this for this um, three hundred uh, or so that's students wonderful. to eat every day. You know, um, and then sometimes that's that could be the only meal they they receive for the day. True, true. So um, and so now at this point, so what are th- are some of the other plans or dreams that you have on the horizon as you move forward with having <laughs> been really accomplished so much and you know have really given back to the community and really you know to your your birth country, you know your yes. birthplace. Mm-hmm. They must be very proud of that when they talk to you and see you. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, as far as um, as far as I am concerned, you know, um, I'm at the point now where I'm very uh, grateful. I'm very thankful, and you know, God has really uh, guided me and some great people along the way and I, I must tell you one of my mentors here at NASA was uh, Professor Jenkins uh-huh, who yes. have really touched I mean, my life and yes. I can tell you that you know he's partially responsible for who I am today um, That's a great and, 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 you know and I never had and he's he's the man that who never really want the accolade right, right. Yeah. Exactly. He never he never want the accolades you know right. um, but he's the one who really uh you know, showed me and you know, teaches me how to navigate the educational system. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 you know, some great you know on how to become a man. Yeah, you right. know. Uh, yeah. So he was he was Professor Jenkins was I mean w- went beyond you know uh, you know yes. uh, his his duties when yeah. it comes yeah. to our students. He wanted everyone to do well. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that you know publicly because I never had a chance to um, to do that. But uh, for me at this point, you know, it's continue doing the work that I do, mm-hmm. and and um, and I'm sure you know um, you know. God will will lead me into the next <laughs> thing the and, see what's <laughs> and, see what, and see what's best. Yes, yeah. and see what's best for me. <laughs> We'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Franz Dorsonville, adjunct professor at New York University, assistant principal in the Uniondale School District, and a proud alumnus of Nassau Community College. And so, if uh, is there an email for one of your organizations? Yes, that you can um, give us. Yes, um, it's a it's info at giftofwriting.org. And for at giftofwriting.org. So, yeah, so email and the, them. the website is uh, giftofwriting.org. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so e- email and, and send your love and, you know, in the way of donation. Yeah, any type of donation. And, and, yeah, and, and, and become involved. And we uh, thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you. Thank we want you. to thank you for being with us. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, along with my fabulous friend, Aurora Workman, president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. The creative director of Lion Tales is Rudy J. Breedy. This show is a production of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Visit nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Lion Tales is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.